And abortion was made a constitutional right in 1973 in Roe v. Wade, as I'm sure you know. But you might not know who the woman at the center of that case was, Jane Roe. Well, she was a 22-year-old pregnant unmarried woman named Norma McCorvey. She was struggling with her sexuality and alco alcoholism when she sought to have an abortion in Texas. She could not have one and filed suit. And as the case wound its way through the courts, she had the baby and she immediately gave it up for adoption. It was her third child. Her two other daughters were also put up for adoption, and they were all unaware of each other for years. Only one of the daughters would have a relationship with her, their mother, Norma, her eldest, Melissa Mills, who was adopted by her grandparents. I spoke with Mills earlier about her mother's place at the center of Roe v. Wade and what she thinks about whether abortion should be legal. Melissa Mills, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it is such a complicated issue, and your family and you are at the heart of this complicated issue. I just want to know, as you were listening to the arguments yesterday at the Supreme Court, what did you think? Uh, yeah, it's they're arguing. Um, there's so many complicated issues they're arguing about, and it's like, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how it's going to go. But I do see uh, with the viability and all the uh, the complications of pregnancy, it's 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 going to take away women's rights uh, that we've had for over 50 years. And I feel like for what my mother also fought for all her life. Um, so it's disturbing for my kids. It's disturbing for me as a parent, as a mother, um, as a healthcare worker. All those things. It's just real disturbing that we're going to step back. I think some people out there might look at you and think to themselves, you know, you were given up for adoption. You went to your grandparents, so you knew your mother. Your sister was given up for adoption. Uh, your baby sister was given up for adoption. She was baby yes, Ro, uh, the, mm -hmm. the baby surrounding this argument. Um, yes, ma'am. Given your relationship with it, some people might expect you to, to be pro-life, to be, to be against abortion rights. Why are you not? No, ma'am, because not everybody's meant to be a mother, and my mother was one of those type of people. Uh, she knew it from the beginning, and, and you, I mean, who am I to say that somebody's supposed to be a mother? It's the same thing they're telling us, you, you, uh, we, we're going to control your body. I mean, you don't tell somebody they have to do something. And she knew from the beginning she wasn't, she didn't want that role. And she always felt more like a sister to me, a sister to me, not my mother. Uh, we had a lot of fun together. Uh, but no, I wouldn't I would never impose on someone to make them do something they didn't want to do if they didn't feel that was the right, you know, way for them to go. You know, part of the so, argument yesterday was about um, parenthood. And part of the argument that goes into Roe v. Wade me. and Casey was that parents, uh, you shouldn't force somebody to be a parent. And Justice Amy Coney Barrett right. tried to push back on that by saying, we're not forcing anyone, or, or overturning Roe wouldn't be forcing anybody uh, to be a parent. Come on, I'm just going to play what she said. Mm. Both Roe and Casey emphasized the burdens of parenting. And insofar as you and many of your amici focus on the ways in which the forced parenting, forced motherhood would hinder women's access to the workplace and to equal opportunities, it's also focused on the consequences of parenting and the obligations of motherhood that flow from pregnancy. Why don't the safe haven laws take care of that problem? It doesn't seem to me to follow that pregnancy and then parenthood are all part of the same burden is that mothers can give up their babies for adoption pretty much immediately, um, and that they don't need to be parents. What do you make of that argument? Right. Well, it's still, it, it, that woman still has to, to remember that she had a child and that she couldn't take care of it, and then she wonders the rest of her life. Uh, it's a double, it's a double sword either way you go. Um, Either way, it's not good. It's not good, but you also put a lot more burden on the woman having to carry that child full term and then giving that baby up. And that's hard. That's hard on your that's hard on your your body, your psyche, and everything else the rest of your life. Um, so either way you go, it's it's not a good situation. And that woman should have a choice on how she wants to live her life. I don't think that should be anybody else's decision but the woman the woman so, who has that decision to make. 
The debate is so heated, and part of the reason why um, Josh Prager, who wrote the book, The Family Row, the book about you and your family, said he wrote it was because yes. he wanted mm -hmm. people to understand the arguments on both sides and the issues facing both sides, have a better understanding. Uh, what, how yes, do you wish the national conversation would go? What, what do you wish people, how do you wish people would talk to each other about this? I wish they could see it for what it is. Women have come so far in, in society and we've we've made it to the part where, I mean, we are almost, we're there. We're equal, we're, we're trying to be equal. Um, equal pay, equal rights, uh, the same thing. Uh, we want everything. We want this, we want the stars, you know, we want everything. Um, and it should, we shouldn't be held back by, I, I don't like to say a mistake, but something that could hold our lives back and not let us move forward the way we want to move forward. Um, I don't want to say the opposite sex doesn't have, they can move forward easier, but in a lot of ways they can. not So uh, that shouldn't be anyone telling a woman what they can and cannot do to move forward in life. Let me ask you that because you mentioned men. Um, when it comes to mm -hmm. this decision, this issue, men don't play a factor. Mm -hmm. Men aren't being held responsible for having nope. sex. There's no men sex. mentioned. There's no men anywhere mentioned about any of the transgressions that have been, you know, it's always the women. And the women have to pay for everything, I feel like, in the long run. Um, they're the ones held accountable, not the man. The woman is being punished for the sex, not the man. Yes, yes, ma'am. That's the way it seems. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for thank lending you. your thoughts on this extremely mm -hmm. complicated mm -hmm. issue. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am.